Well, welcome to the follow-up after show, kind of a web extra for the viewers who saw our big show tonight. We had Peter Sinclair. Of course, he's a Michigan-based photographer specializing in energy and the environment. He joined us for the after show. We talked all about e-vehicles and beyond for the big show. For the after show, we're going to focus on your latest trip to Greenland, your seventh trip. Right. Uh, I know you came uh, on the show uh, last year, talked a little bit about your trip in 2018, showed mm -hmm. us some video. Now, fast forward uh, four years, you're back in Greenland. Right. We have some video, and uh, there's been big changes just in four years. Yeah, right? big changes. Uh, uh, I Basically, I was coming out of COVID. Uh, I, I had a, a little bit of uh, budget for, for a trip. This is um, this is Conger Luswak, which is in southwest Greenland. It's a hub where a lot of science teams uh, meet and, and uh, fly out from. So we are divert, uh, flying out of here. You notice, uh, you may wonder why uh, the airstrip is so close to a 500-foot mm -hmm. granite wall. It's because that's all you got in Greenland, basically. Okay. And uh, this is the, the coastal area, which is ice-free in the summer. And we are uh, flying just a, a few fjords up to a glacier called uh, Inesquata Sermia where the science team, uh, an international team, is going to be looking at some uh, emissions uh, coming out of this melting glacier. And this will give you just kind of a uh, geographical uh, clue of where Isangwata Sermia is. This is what it looks like on the ground. This is the, this is the meltwater coming off of this glacier. The meltwater at this particular place uh, routes itself down several hundred meters into the ground where it gets pressurized and then it pops up in this big upwelling, which is unlike anything I've ever seen at a glacier. Here's some, mm. some drone footage and you can see the front of the glacier here, which is an extension of the ice sheet, which itself is three times the size of Texas and up to two miles thick. Here's kind of a panorama. You can see some of our team members on the ground there for scale. And there, those are our tents there in the center right now. And panning towards the glacier, which is uh, uh, re receding. Uh, you can kind of see uh, the darkness uh, of the, uh, the sort of the melting tip of that glacier. And uh, off in the distance, you can see the vast expanse of, of the ice sheet itself. So we were walking out of there. We, we had enough money to chop her in, but we had to walk out. That was the deal. And those are musk and ox. These are, right? these are musk ox that yeah. were kind of curious and observing us uh, on our way out of there. And uh, they're, uh, you know, relatively uh, uh, harmless, although you wouldn't want to press them. They're not exactly oxen. They're more like mountain goats, okay. very hairy mountain goats, and they have sort of a prehistoric look to them. And after they got a little bored with us, they, this particular family sort of decided to take off. But um, uh, after 10 hours, uh, we finally made our way down to uh, uh, where we were going to get picked up by uh, uh, one of our partners uh, in, in a truck. And uh, perhaps that uh, video will come up. I don't know. Well, when the cutting of the chase on your trips to Greenland, has Greenland long been seen as the place to go for folks like you? Well, another uh, picture yeah, there. take uh, take a look at this. Uh, this is about 20 miles away from those previous pictures. This is the edge of the ice sheet. I camped near this ice wall in 2015. Down in the bottom right of this picture, you see the road mm -hmm. going by. That is Greenland's, literally Greenland's longest road, about 25 miles long. And I was looking for this same place in 2022 uh, to see if, uh, if there was any change. And I actually, I drove by it the first time and didn't even recognize it because uh, this picture was actually taken much closer, actually down standing on that road uh, right across from the ice wall. And you can see the wall itself has just about disappeared. And you can see the ice is uh, receding up that uh, uh, rocky slope. And you can also see the hills in, in the back as the whole ice sheet itself has just been losing uh, uh, mass and, and altitude. So uh, everywhere you go, uh, when, you, when you 
you have like maybe a five or ten year uh, time frame, the, the, the changes are uh, just stunning. So what is it telling us? Why should I worry about that? Well, uh, because Greenland, uh, like I said, the ice sheet is three times the size of Texas, two miles thick, and contains enough water by itself to raise sea level about 22 feet. So even a five or 10 percent uh, melt in the Greenland ice sheet uh, is of great concern, not only for you know uh, our, our coastal cities, but actually for our social stability as a society, because that kind of sea level rise is going to have massive, massive social uh, uh, impacts. Uh, the scientists tell me that Greenland is currently losing something like 10,000 cubic meters of ice per second on the average. And it is the number one driver of sea level rise at the present time. But hang on, because Antarctica is coming. Now, remember the math. Greenland's three times the size of Texas. Antarctica's ten times the size of Greenland and contains something like 200 feet of potential sea level rise. So if Antarctica starts to move like Greenland is moving now, then we're no longer looking at just a few feet of sea level rise. We're looking at tens of feet. And uh, this is what we really hope we can head off. Uh, and there's, there's a certain amount of damage and, and um, climate change that's in the pipeline, sea level rise that's going to happen. Uh, but well, we, we see the extremes of weathers as well. And we right. see the extremes of weathers. And right. I'll be talking about this on Thursday right. night at Blessed right. Sacrament Church uh, in more detail. Right. Uh, but certainly every time this, the sea level rises, it means that the hurricanes become more destructive. Because if you have a, uh, a six-foot storm, storm surge, suddenly you've got a seven-foot storm surge, you know, with the same storm. So uh, it's, um, it, you just get uh, orders of magnitude more damage as, right. as you go up. Well, and, and this is the evidence why I think proponents of moving forward with EVs and other things want to do it at a rapid rate that some are uncomfortable with. There is a sense of urgency to, to get there. Right. Well, you know, a lot of people have... Uh, been unfortunately uh, targeted with a disinformation campaign about the science of climate change. Uh, th mm -hmm. The scientists have known this for a uh, hundred years, actually. But we've actually had we've got predictions that are 50 years old that are now coming to pass with uh, with eerie accuracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, there's really no question in the science community, but but we've had some, some very powerful bad actors with access to levers of big information uh, machines that have really misled a lot of people. And so that's what gets me out of bed in the morning is to try to push back against that as best I can. Well, you do a good job. Like I said, it's your life's work and thanks, uh, you're, you're making a difference. So thanks for coming on. You Appreciate bet. It. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us for the After Show.